Mini Projects with Dayton. I'm Dayton, and behind me is the... <laughs> that, that was supposed to work a lot better. I'm Dayton, and behind me is the I Can't Believe It's This Simple Levitation Machine. Now a lot of you guys have been asking me to make content more frequently, so for the next two weeks, I'm gonna crank out as many mini projects as possible. Let's start with this one. This is a levitation machine. Not only is this thing a pure artistic statement, but it can also make this ring levitate. Now I bet you're thinking, dude, I wasn't born yesterday. I've seen magnets repel each other before. But what if I reminded you that this ring, aluminum, is non-magnetic? So how did I make this non-magnetic piece of metal levitate? Well, it has to do with one of my favorite laws, and that's Lenz's Law. Take for example these two copper pipes. Copper, as we all know, is non-magnetic. But, they do exhibit a very interesting property if the magnet falls not through air, but through them. Did you notice the difference? In air? Through copper. It slows down significantly, so much so, let's see if I can do this on my first try, that I can... <laughs> let's try that again. So much so, that I can actually keep the magnet suspended indefinitely as it falls through the copper tubes. This isn't a trick. This is science. The reason this so-called trick works is because as the magnetic field changes through a conductor like copper, and a falling magnet is a changing magnet, the copper will create an opposing magnetic field. The universe wants more than anything just to be left alone. It will oppose any change that you make. A changing magnetic field will be opposed by the copper creating a magnetic field upward, resisting the force of gravity. That might have seemed a lot like a tangent, but it is not. Imagine instead of the magnet falling, I could somehow force the magnetic field to go up. As the magnet fell upward through the copper, it would pull the copper up a little bit with it. This is the exact same thing that is keeping this aluminum ring levitating from this levitator behind me. It doesn't have to be aluminum, it could be copper or anything else that's a good conductor. So let me show you how this is built. It might become a little bit more clear after I break it down for you. This here is a wooden base plate and... Uh, what do you want me to say? It's a piece of wood with a hole in it. Inside that goes this conduit pipe. It's, uh, steel and... Eh. It's magnetic. If you don't have one of these, they're pretty easy just to find lying around. Perfect. All hijinks aside, the sole purpose of the steel rod is to stand up here on the wooden post. Final thing is the solenoid. This is about a hundred turns tall and uh, three windings thick of 18 gauge magnet wire. And this quite simply slides right on top of the steel conduit. And finally, this aluminum ring sits on top. It all plugs into the wall outlet, 120 volts AC. So that should be something that everybody has available to them. And now we can turn on the power and bring the voltage up nice and slow. What's happening here is that this electromagnet is creating a magnetic field alternating up and down. And that magnetic field would typically drop off very quickly. However, thanks to this steel conduit, it's acting like a, um, think of it like a magnetic wire. Only instead of being a normal wire that moves electrical current through it, it's instead moving magnetic flux. 
which means that we can extend that magnetic field up as high as this magnetic conductor goes. So just for fun, let's see what would happen if we took out this steel pipe and replaced it with a PVC one. Here, this is a PVC pipe, completely non-magnetic. So at exactly the same power as before, this is an absolute letdown. The reason that this steel ring is levitating is because as the electric current is moving around this primary coil, we can use our right hand rule to say that the magnetic field is going up through the entire length of the steel conduit. And as that magnetic field passes through the ring, a opposing magnetic field will be created by the ring so that they resist each other. I suppose I kind of lied at the beginning of the video. It is just two magnets resisting one another and repelling. And since the magnetic field being created by this ring is pointed down, we know that the current is moving around it like this. And that's also why it's getting hot to the touch, because that current is no small number. Ow! Son of a... If you build one of these at home, you might consider adding a freewheeling diode to prevent voltage spikes like this from happening. Okay, let's give this thing the 120 volts it deserves. Plus 10 cool factor if it hits the ceiling. Well, there goes the fuse. I guess it couldn't handle the awesomeness. Well, I guess that's a good enough place to stop for today. Whether it be magnets or metal or frogs, anything can levitate with Lenz's Law properly applied.